What is up? Thank you for coming to my channel, Prison POV. So today I'm going to talk about my first prison tattoo. Which, excuse me, I forgot the name of the homeboy, but it was actually a suggestion that I got in my DMs from one of the subscribers. And I was going to do tattoo videos, of course, but I didn't think of the idea to say, hey, my first prison tattoo. So shout out to homeboy who suggested that. Alright, so what it be, man? It's this right here. Fuck what you think. I got it at uh, Central Valley MCCF. My first term. Homeboy um, Joker. Same to Jamie. Now when you go in the pen, you're going to have your crew, man. And right there on that main line, my first term. MCCF. I was kicking with the homeboy Devin from my neighborhood, Rexon. And the homeboy Joker. He's from Tulare County, TC. We are all tighter than 10 toes in a sock, man. Now Joker kind of quit tattooing. He was getting away from it. But me and Devin were like, come on, dog, come on. Because you got to have a rocker, man. Rocker or a collar, they call him. Got to have one. So I was wanting one, man. And that's what I came up with. The fuck what you think. It was either going to be that or sick of it all. And I decided on that. Homeboy Devin got um, Misery Loves Company. Bro, while we're on the subject of tattoos, also his Bacardi bat. I got that right after my first term. Got it from a guy named Mike Tevis while I was doing reception time. Wasco Reception. And um, he's from Oceano and his clique called Oceano White Trash. And they all get that Bacardi bat. So I was like, yeah, I'm not from Oceano, but Mike Tevis, he's a transplant actually. He's from Bakersfield, moved up there. He said, get it, dog. Get you that Bacardi bat, homeboy. So I rocked that shit. So yeah, that's the tattoo I got. That's my first prison tattoo. I got a couple other tattoos there at the MCCF. The name Donnie. He went on, his name ended up being Dum Dum. He did this uh, hard time guy. I don't know if you're going to see him. Got to have you a little hard time guy. And then he could do the hard time for me. Also, Donnie, it did this right here. PFL, Pegwood for Life. Homeboy Corey Davis has the same letters on his chest. All I did was outline it with a pen, put the pattern on there, and take it off. The reason why he got the name Dum Dum is because he has a strike. Anytime you do a strike, you have a strike, and you catch a turn, they double that shit up and give you 80%. So since he had a strike, and he caught him, so he stole some sheets, some $10 sheets, which would be like petty theft of the prior. He gave him 16 months, double that shit up, 32, 80%. So he's doing 32 to 80 for a set of sheets. Called him dumb, dumb dog, and he ran with it. You know what I mean? Good, solid ass dude, though, right there. So another thing Joker did, though, did the tattoo, like I said, did on me and Devin, gave us our collars. He retired the gun, he didn't want to do no more tattooing, he's getting short. Now I don't know what the name is for this, we're going to talk about something for a minute. He put beads up in my junk, for lack of a better word. Now, when I was doing my first term, people were talking about this. I guess it has gotten popular over the years. People have done it and talked about it. It's a thing. I don't know what it's called. Dinosaur, and they call it whatever. You stab yourself in your junk, and you insert beads in there. Now, like I said, Joker put two beads in mine. He, I end up doing some over the years, too, giving people their beads, and we'll get into that. Like I said, Joker didn't mind, man. It's painful as hell. Now, when I do them, there's different styles. See, at this the penis right here, I, I go sideways. It's actually poke two holes. I go in that sideways. Joker went in, say this is the thing right here. He went in just frontward on me. He had a damn a melt. He took a big pen and he melted it. It looked like an icicle. Nice sharp edge on it. He freaking jammed that thing in there. Let me say this real quick, though. People were doing it right. They had the beads and the Vaseline. They were making their little shanks to step to the skin to put the the, the bead in there. So one guy got caught in the front of the CCF I was at with a little shank. And just for piercing, they racked his ass, gave him an A1 offense. They wrote him up as if it was a straight a shank, a weapon. And they will get your ass, dude, if you get caught in C2C R with a weapon. A lot of times, refer you to the DA, district attorney for outside charges. you lose like a year, go to the shoe, all that. All bad. And this dude, he was like a straight square too. He, he wasn't stabbing nobody. He wasn't going to kill nobody. He wasn't going to let nothing die. He only had that thing for piercings, man. He got caught with it. So Joker didn't mind, man. And we, I, I lived in a different dorm than him. You're not allowed to go in other people's dorms. We know they're on the vent, so we could do this. Went back and sat on the toilet. Now they have, uh, the cops come in. They have a broom closet where they keep all the brooms and mops and all kind of shit. And they have porters, AM porters, PM porters. And when it's time for the porters to clean, the cops come in and open that closet. Sometimes I'll do a little walkthrough, but not much. So I'm in Joker's dorm. He's going to do this, um, he's going to do this, uh, piercing for me, put the beads in. Actually, he stuck me, stuck the thing in there. I got this thing, like, this far to me. 
I mean, it's just like buried. The, my, a whole shaft has a freaking shank in it, like this. They're like, man walking, man walking, is what they say when a cop comes in. Cop came in to open that room closet, so Joker left the stall area. He didn't want to look suspicious down there, and just left me sitting this, like this for like 20 minutes with this thing hanging out. I almost passed out. I couldn't look at it. It's like, it was like, gave me the eebie jeebies. Like, what in the hell, dude? I mean, we picked the, like the wrong time to do it. Find the cop left, he came back, pulled it out, and I uh, put the beads in. And you know what? All that for nothing because girls hate it. It's painful to girls for whatever reason. They do not like it, man. Stupid, I like to cut mine out actually. A couple times I was tempted, I was going to take a razor blade and just cut it out, but there's veins right there and all that. And there's a homeboy and he got at me in the DMs. His name's Ryan, I guess his brother, just parole from Texas. And he had to cut his out. I guess he said his, I don't know. But yeah, hardcore. He had a video I didn't even look at it. I don't know if I could stomach that kind of stuff. Shout out to homeboy, but man, I couldn't even stomach when I saw my own, much less somebody else. It's rough. In fact, I didn't even do mine because I can't stomach it. I need to cut it out though. I go to the doctor and had them do it. Homeboy Devin, like I said, we both got our collars by uh, Joker. He got his too, and he did go and have his surgically removed. Like I said, several years later, I started doing it. People were talking about it, and I, I didn't. I did mine when I was at a uh, El Palma. La Palma Correctional Facility, Elroy, Arizona. And I'm not for your term. Because people were talking about it, not a lot of people wanted to do it. And I was like, fuck it, I'll give it a shot. This one dude, man, this funny thing about it, his name was Porn Star. He said that he wanted his done. And charged like, I think I charged 20 bucks to do it, man. So it was a good little hustle. And this takes a second, but not a lot of people can stomach it. Like I said, this being Porn Star. He came up, I got the gloves on, the little shank, the beads, where he put it in, pulls the pants down, pulls the junk out. Dude, it's a freaking. It looked like a button on a fur coat. It looked like a push button on a tracker. Couldn't even see it was so small. I was like, dude, I'm like, what the fuck? What am I supposed to do? And you couldn't even see the thing. It didn't even hang. It just one little head sticking out like this. I'm like, brother, how am I supposed to fucking put any kind of piercing or anything in that? What the fuck? So anyway, I ended up grabbing it and doing the best I could. It ended up being a little bit crooked. And I was like, shit. My bad, brother. It was kind of funny. His name was Porn Star. And it um, must have been like a joke or something. I'm not sure. But he had a good, solid dude. That's all I'm going to say about him. I'm not going to say where he's from. I'm not going to say if he's a South Sarah Wood. Because you know how to be one of them two. Anyway, respect to him. But, so I did a couple of those. And, um, seems like a lot of them I did end up kind of crooked. And I'd have to redo them, man. But it's kind of, kind of difficult. I guess I should have did it how Joker did. I went straight in. But like I said, it goes sideways. And you hold a, a piece of soap right there. And pull the skin up. And the soap would always crumble. It was a mess. It was a hassle. So, yeah, man. That was my first prison tattoo. Like I said, I ended up getting a couple other tattoos there from Homeboy Dum Dum. I like to get tattoos every time I go to the pen. Every time I went to prison, I did get one. Every spot, except for when I did my second violation. I made some verde. I didn't get any tattoos there because of, um, we opened the place up. It was a new joint. And you usually got to take an old Walkman and break it apart to get that motor. Or you need to have a couple things floating around to get that gun running. I actually don't know how to tattoo and I'll say this, all the prison time I've done, all the tattoos I have, I couldn't even really build a gun. I guess I really had to. My life depend on it. And I had the parts. I could probably throw something together. But I don't know much about it, man, other than just getting ink. And like I said, I've gotten tattoos every spot I've been to. Let me just tell a little street story real quick, man. Talk about this tattoo I got right here on the side of my neck. It says, Do Sin. Which is lyrics on the end of a Pantera song. So there's this dude, man, he's an associate. He's definitely not a homeboy of mine. And you'll find out why. But I've fucked with him here and there over the years. Always end up, things go bad, I do him wrong, he does me wrong, we do each other dirty. I don't even know why we keep entering into each other's life. We bump into each other over the years. Like I said, not my homeboy, but acquaintance. In fact, when the last time I saw him, he started to stab me. What happened was, uh, I was going to sell this receiver for him, for 20 bucks. It was a stereo receiver. I took it to my pad, and someone straight stole it. I went and told him, damn dog, that, that shit came up fucking stolen. I, you know, I guess I should have covered it. I don't know, fuck that. I went thinking like that, and I, like I need to cover it. It's like, fuck, dude, it, you know, sorry you came up short, homie, because someone stole it. Then, like, about a couple weeks later, I came up with my own receiver, different brands, different, and all that. And I have forgot about his shit and get stolen from my house. And I was trying to sell mine. And I called him up like I got this receiver for sale. He goes, yeah, bring it over. I want to buy it. I take it over there. He's like, nah, man, remember you owe me a receiver because you had mine. You said it got stolen. I was like, oh, yeah. Uh, I do owe you, I guess, for that. I'll make a right, but not with this. This is a whole different transaction. I can't afford to just give you this right there to squash that deal. Fuck that. Uh, we'll, we'll take care of that later. We'll make a right. Pulls a knife out on me. He's like, you're not leaving with that fucking receiver. And the dude who took me there, my ride, 
got all tripped out and all scared, so hyper hyperventilating, like, oh, fuck you, don't fuck. And I was like, dude, chill the fuck out. He didn't say he was going to stab you, motherfucker. What are you tripping on? I told him, matter of, fuck, matter of fact, the dude who gave me the ride was all, oh, fuck. I said, go out to your car and just get your car running. I'm going to be out there in a minute. I'm going to have a couple of holes in me. You just got to take me to the hospital as soon as you can. So he ran outside, heard him start his car. <clears throat> and I tell the dude, look, I'm leaving with this receiver. <clears throat> dude, you feel like you got to do, bro. Turn, turn my back to him, walked out the door, expecting him to pull me a couple of times. He had the knife. He said he would, but he wouldn't get my shit. And he didn't stab me. So pretty much the last time I seen him, <clears throat> several years go by, I ended up bumping into his old lady somewhere. She tells me that they're not together no more. Matter of fact, he's in jail for beating up real bad. And she wants to start fucking with me, talking to me. I kind of ran with it because I was fresh out. As a matter of fact, I was living with the motel at a motel and I didn't really have shit going on. She bought me an ounce of weed, gave me a hundred bucks, bought me a bunch of clothes. I'm not going to turn that away. I mean, fuck it. Like I said, dude pulled a knife on me. You expect me to be loyal to you? The last time I saw you, fucking wanted to shank my ass. So fuck it. She was coming by my room and just hooking me up. And we were talking and all that. Then she told me one day that he's getting ready to get out of jail. And that she's going to tell him that, no, that she wants to be with me. And I say, no, nah, no, nah, fuck that. I go, let him be home. I go, you guys got kids together. You guys work it out. You know, just do that. Me and you're not together. You're not going to fucking leave his ass for me. Hell no, it never work. She goes, all right, well, I'll let him come home. I'll go back and be with him. I'll work on that shit. If you come by, you know, continue to stop by once in a while. I was like, fuck it, I'll come by. So anyways, like I said, time goes by. I do go by there and hang out here and there. Don't say nothing to him. I'm not fucking with her. She still gives me stuff on the down low. I'm using her as a hustle here and there. When I come up short and I need something, fuck it. Like I say, he's not my homeboy. I don't owe him any loyalty. He's an acquaintance. I would never do my homeboys like that because I do not fuck with my old ladies at all, period. And if I see someone fuck with one of my homeboys old ladies, I'll check that shit too. Not cool. So, but I didn't know, didn't know this dude jack shit. So I still go by there once in a while, kind of use her to hustle, like I say. And then I had an old lady. And I had told her that I was messing with homegirl who was in jail. But she knew the whole get down. My colonel lady did. And she didn't like me going over there. But at this point, I was still going by there hanging out. And it was mostly just came by with him. Like I said, I wasn't fucking with her at all other than to get 20 bucks here and there on the down low. But my old lady's like, no, nah, I don't want you going by over there. I'm like, pretty much, shut the fuck up. Do what I want. So I'm over there one day, chilling at night. And this fool tells me, hey, do you want a fucking tattoo? I'm going to put a tattoo on you. I was like, yeah. And that's why I wanted to get that deuce in right here. I was like, yeah, put this on. So I'm sitting down in his tattoo chair. He's going to start blasting me. And actually, he did start. And the phone rings. He gets up to answer it. He's talking on the phone. And he fucking uh, comes and sits back down, hangs the phone up. Tattooing on me. He's like, hey. That was your old lady. She said, I need to keep an eye on you real good because when I was in jail, you were over here kicking back with my old lady. Tell him this was tattoo on me. I was like, um, oh, yeah, dude, um, shit. Uh, hey, you can't trust her, man. You know, girl's live. Fuck that. So he's like, uh, just tattooing on me. It's kind of quiet for a minute. I was like, stop. Stop, motherfucker. So he stopped. I said, let's go outside. So I said, yes, man. I was over here chilling with your old lady. Got half a tattoo done. Yeah, bro, I was over here kicking back with her. Fuck it. It is what it is. He said, has it been like that since I got out? Have you seen her? I said, no, I'm not fucked with her at all. Matter of fact, I'm a told, other one told her to be back with you. She wanted to fucking leave your ass. I said, give you another shot. He's like, all right, don't mention nothing to her. Let's just keep this between us. I was like, all right. So he goes, let's go finish the rest of that tattoo. I was like, fuck, I don't know if I wanted to finish this rest of the tattoo or not, man. Uh, you serious? I did sit down. He finished it. I don't think he fucked it up. I put no hidden, nothing in there. But he sure didn't shade it. He could have done a better job. But we cut it short. And I even remember when he was tattooing on me that she came and sat in front of me and she had like uh, somewhat of a, she was dressed skimpily. And she was trying to make eyes at me and get, you know, blow little kisses and shit. And I was just like, stop doing what the fuck you doing? While he's tattooing on me. Him and I ended up getting in a fight afterwards. After all this, I had nothing to do with her. I still kept on going over there and shit. What happened was, my mother one day, he gives me these two golden pins. Go sell to my connection for some dope. He's like, do you think you could sell these? They're two fucking gold pins in a case. I was like, I guess. I called my connection. Hey, you want these two gold pins? He's like, yeah, come on. Bring, bring them. Meet me over here. Blah, blah, blah. I said, yeah, my connection wants them. Went and met my connection. Got in his truck. We're driving. He's like, where are they at? I was like, oh, they're right here. And he's like, what the fuck is this? I said, the two uh, gold pins. He said, oh, I thought you meant two gold tins. Like 10-inch wolfers. I don't know, what the fuck are these gold pins for? I don't need these. And he's clowning a little bit, my connection was. He's like, I thought you meant some woofers, dude. Some pins. What the fuck? I was like, yeah, you're right. What was I thinking? Threw him out the window. Because I felt kind of embarrassed, actually, that I tried to sell him some two gold pins. 
So, I ended up going back to Duke's house later. No, I think I'm going to buy back. And I told him, dude, my connection didn't want the fucking gold pins. And he's like, where are they at? And I don't have them no more. He got mad. Me and him ended up getting in a fight. Again, someone had given me a ride there. Didn't jump in. I'm not expecting to, but this one was scary too. Got all tripped out. You know, dude, you're not involved in the fight. How come you're acting all scary? Isn't that weird how people are? Sometimes your rides will get all weird. So I'm fighting this dude. Rides getting kind of weird. I end up leaving after the fight. Follows me out, talking shit. You know how it is after you fight someone. It kind of carries over to the front yard. Yeah, fuck you. The some of the front yard, and I have a phone, an old beat up ass phone, and I go throw it out his uh, vehicle, the window, and it bounces off and hits my right in the head. The dude gave me right over there, hit him right in the head. We got uh, get got a car, took off. I don't think I've seen that fool or that chick after that. Crazy ass shit, man. Hold up. All right. So it's interesting how a lot of tattoos. Several people have the same tattoo, like a group tattoo type thing. I know three different people have on my eyebrow. I was the first one to get it. It says Hose Lovett. A lot of people have been asking. I got the Hose Lovett because I was in county jail fighting my four-year term. I saw it scratched into the table. I was like, ooh, that's tight. The love's actually heart. It says Hose with a Z, heart, it. I was like, yeah, Hose Lovett. I had to find out later that it's a Matt Dre song. So I got that on because I wanted to go to court because my girlfriend was actually testifying against me over that charge I had. I got four years. I wanted her to see... A new tattoo over my eye. You know, I couldn't wear, you know, you go to court, you want to wear something nice. I was a state issue. I didn't have nothing nice to wear, so I thought I'd wear me a new tattoo to court. Anyways, man, I was going to tell another tattoo story. I can't remember what the hell I was thinking, what I was going to say. But, oh yeah, right here, my wrist. 51, 52. Like four of us got that when I was in Wasco reception. Again, when I was on my four-year term. I was in reception at C1. Sitting around one day like, fuck, let's all get a tattoo. What can we get? I come up with 51, 52. Now you heard the term 5150, it means crazy. 5152 means like J crap, weird type crazy. There's this girl I know, man. She used to live off 2nd Street. She's crazy as fuck. She did all kinds of random shit. I could have make, I could talk all day in a video about this chick and all the crazy shit she did. Me and the South Side are over there chilling one day. It was raining. And he had his fucking jacket. We came in. She's like, would you like me to put your jacket in the dryer? It looked like it got wet from the rain. He's like, yeah. Cool, thanks. Gives her the jacket, she puts it in the dryer. Like about 10 minutes goes by, he's like, hey, go get my jacket, check out my jacket. She's like, huh? He's like, yeah, my jacket, you put it in the dryer. She's like, no, what do you mean? He's like, I gave you my jacket when I got here to put it in the dryer. You said it was wet from the rain, you dry it? She's like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. Totally plain dumb, like she's gonna try to steal the jacket. He's like, what the fuck, is that bitch 5152 or what? I started dying laughing, dude. 5152, that's funny shit. So I'm watching reception, like, damn, let's get something. 5152. You know what I mean? That's about it. I'm going to go live tomorrow, sometime first thing in the morning. And um, until then, I send mines, cut the string, and let this fly. Peace.